Hey, welcome back to Whitetail Garage. This episode, we're back on the F-250. Not because I want to, but because I have to. Unfortunately, you know, we run into things sometimes where people decide to break in and take your stuff. So I've already done the uh, lock removal. So no lock key back there. Uh, and so what they decided to do was just uh, break the window. Uh, I'm sorry. They decided to break the window right here and pry open the, the lock right there. So, you know, if they want in, there's not much you can be able to do. Part of the problem was it happened uh, in broad daylight between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. And... Uh, was in the front of a mall parking lot right at the entrance nobody bothered to even look that direction i imagine and the reason why is because they cut the horn wire so i've taken the grill off i'm a little bit ahead uh of the work but then because uh, i just started work and i was just frustrated um and i thought i better better film it because I, I came up with some, some pretty cool ideas so they know thieves know to go right through the grill and they actually damaged my grill right where they went through. They go right through the grill, right there. And you can see there's a little bit of damage there where they went through with pliers and peeled out that harness uh, so the horn wouldn't make any noise. And then went about doing everything else that we're gonna do. So if you were that guy, you're a piece of garbage and uh, you know you need to get a, a real life and a real job, uh, find better ways to take care of yourself and your family. Uh, enough about that though. What I've decided is I'm going to relocate the horn. There's a couple of companies out there that do that. I have a couple of different brackets, send it some different directions, but I'll give you a short harness. I think one of them puts it further back in here and hides it and kind of puts a metal plate or whatever. My thought process is I was looking around under the hood for a good spot and you see right there is a stud sitting on the firewall. I don't know what that stud is for, but it fits that hole perfectly. It's almost like it was meant to go there. So this guy's gonna mount right in there and I'm gonna use another nut to hold it on. And then I'm gonna extend this harness and uh, move it over there. So the original pigtail is right here. I already clipped it off and clipped it to this wire that I'm gonna then route over there. And then I had another this was just spare parts I had was a male and female of this pigtail. You can get these things on Amazon. I don't even know where I got this from, but it's a it's a male and female pigtail. So I just attached that to the factory harness. That's going to get tucked back behind here and then up down the fender, back across the firewall, plug in right there to the new horn location. So I, I like I said, I'm already ahead. There are plenty of videos to show how to remove the grill. I had never done it before on this year model, but there's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, bolts across the top, 10 millimeter bolts. And then you have to pry it away with snaps around the bottom. These bottom snaps are kind of a pain. If you have a really long screwdriver, like this guy made it really easy. You go through the top and then down there, through that little hole, you press down on the metal tab as you're prying. And that, that makes it a lot easier and you can go across and do all four of them all four of them that way so uh, that made those easy the outside ones they, these are the orange plastic ones they're a lot easier uh, to pry out but the the metal ones in the center are a little tougher so okay so like I said I'm a little ahead there I've gotten as far as this pigtail is now ready to route that direction back behind the core support once I get this new wire uh, run around so I'm gonna mount the go ahead and mount the horn in the new location and start to route that wire, see how long I need it. I've got some, uh, some you know, conduit or uh, uh, split wire loom that I'll cover it all with. So let's jump to the next step.
looking across the whole hood there you can kind of see where that's placed I used a nylon locking nut that fits that thread it's nice and tight it's not rubbing on anything like I said it's almost like it was meant to be there it's got the right orientation when it comes to the horns are facing down so moisture will stay out of them um, the only thing I'm worried about is heat if there's an issue with heat they certainly don't deal with that kind of heat up front that they're gonna be dealing with back there if that's an issue then I'll find out the hard way I guess but you know they seem to have plenty of sensitive stuff right above the manifolds on this side so I imagine that will take it like I said if it doesn't I'll find out and I'll let you guys know I'll pin a top comment if it blows this horn so now I'm just gonna route this wire around the engine bay that's plugged in nicely there like I said this will get covered in conduit and I'm gonna uh, split wire loom and then I'm gonna probably tuck it right in with this harness Route it down where it looks very, very much factory. Um, probably have it drop down right there. And go right around this fender. Allow me to pass through there. And this guy's going to go right through there. All right, back to the front end here. I've already routed the wire. I'm gonna show you the way that I've routed everything. So, horn was initially bolted here, and it hung out right here, right in this area here. I've moved the horn to up there. That seems to be a perfect spot for it. That stud in the firewall was already there. Maybe there's a, a reason it's used. Um, it had nothing bolted to it at all, so. Uh, it doesn't look like it ever had been used from the factory. I found a nice thick washer and a nylon lock nut to hold it up there. So that moves the horn and gets it out of the way. Then again, the horn pigtail ran down this way and kind of looped into the horn. And that's where they're coming in through the grill and just ripping that harness out. So what I've done is taken that and routed it the other direction. So... Kind of pan him back here a little bit. I've got the horn harness running through the center there, back behind the temperature sensor. I believe that's what that is, is the temperature sensor. Uh, and then it runs back behind this cooler and then up here. And like I showed earlier, I've just added this Deutsch connector right in here. So that way, if I do have to disconnect this harness at any point, it's here rather than routed all the way back over to the horn, I can unplug here. So uh, I just had that connector, absolutely not necessary, but thought since I had it, I'll go ahead and wire it in. I've got it tucked in here, so the only thing I ever have to do is remove this top if I needed to unplug that harness. It's good there. Then route it down and under the core support right through there. Coming back around this way, you can see it coming out of the core support with plenty of room routing through there. Back up the fender, don't pay attention to this disgusting battery. Then back around the back there, I've got it zip tied for support there. Up around the front, zip tied for support there, and then plugged in there. And then the hood is up, so I'm gonna get a double honk, but it works. So everything does what it's supposed to, way up there out of the way. Again, probably not as loud as it would be up here for, uh, you know, honking at people. But I'm not a person that uses the horn much to honk at people, so it's more for the alarm aspect of it. I do plan on getting an air horn for this later. That'll be in other videos, but um, that will, you know, certainly augment that if I, if I need to. Now, my other concern was the camera wire. So this is the Platinum, so it has the camera and washer uh, camera washer port or whatever on the front of it so uh, here's the washer fluid port and then here's the camera the camera is a coax kind of style cable that's not something that if it were cut it would easily be repairable 
so I'd end up having to buy a harness for it. So my concern was that if I did leave this harness out, it traditionally routed over the top here, plugged in here, and then came down and then plugged in here. I mean, you know, it was supported on those two pieces here and here. And so what I opted to do was take it out of there, route it straight down the center through the back, and then come in through the middle. So hopefully it's really hard to see behind that giant Ford emblem and won't be mistaken for a horn wire and they won't uh, try and mess with it. So really the only thing left would be if they come all the way up to here and try and do something with that. I may try and route these, pick them up and route them a little differently perhaps, but for now that's really the only way they'd then be able to cut the signal wire to the horn. So I may, may do something about that, but anyhow. You'd think that the grill would block enough of that, but you'd also think that the grill would have blocked it to begin with. Anyways, so that is the horn rerouting. So I will get to reinstalling the grill, kind of show you all in reverse how to do that. Okay, one more time. I have rerouted that wire now, rather than coming through here and here and here, I have pulled it back and closer back under here which makes it really hard to get to when you're going through the grill so really through the grill you should not see really anything then maybe a couple of these wires I'll have to see exactly what you can see through the top there and just make sure that's good and hidden otherwise I might you know hide that behind something as well so we'll see Okay, and one last go. I have now made it to where you can't see any of the wires. I've taken this one, spun it around to the other side, so it's tucked back there, really hard to get through through the grill. Then this one, I routed back behind there, so you'll see, but it'll be really hard to get to. So really, this sensor would be the only thing, which I think is the sensor to pop the... Uh, it's either the sensor that says this is open, which I can't tell, or it's my temperature sensor. So, you guys can tell me down in the comments. I don't know which it is. Anyways, that's all hidden now. Much better than the way Ford did it. Alright, so here's the back side of the grill. Here's your hose hookup. It has a little split in this ring for you to take this ring off. That is kind of a pain. There we go. And then this just pushes on. And then the plastic ring holds it on. Like that. It's on. And then here is your connector. That is a very specific way to do it. This is how you press down that to release that guy it did not work for me I ended up having to use a pick as you can see I kind of messed it up slightly I had to use a pick to open it up it wasn't enough to to get it off only goes on one way that's a very snug fit and then back to these metal clips that's these are the clips I was talking about if you're able to press down on them and squeeze them they come out of that pocket a lot easier and you can press down on them right there if you have it a long enough screwdriver. All right, so with all of this ready, close this up. So like I said, it all just presses down in. You can look down in there to see if you've gotten all the clips in. Press it in really simply. And then I've got to now replace all of these bolts.
all of these were the same. Gotta run away. All of these were the same except for this one. Slightly different. Much smaller head. The smaller head goes all the way on the other side. Right in the front of the, the intake here. That one was different. All the others were the same. These are super basic, so if you have a you know pair of pliers that you can needle nose you can get underneath here. What I like to use I like to use these trim panel. You can get a kit on Amazon like $14 for like five of these things. And they're really good at getting right underneath there, and then you can get and pry up, and then you go underneath and pry up and pop the whole thing out. The reverse of it, you just put it in the hole and push it down, and that locks it in. Now it's pretty obvious for 90% of you guys, but I figure there's you know one person that that explanation might help. So. Now, I had a couple that just gave me a problem, so I'm trying to push them in in a tight spot and it doesn't want to go in, and I don't really have the angle to be able to just press on the bottom like that. So it's just as simple to separate these things. You've got the two different pieces. You can put that bottom one in like that, and then just make sure you align it. It is, it is kind of keyed, uh, but make sure you align it where it goes back in correctly, and then just press it in. Good to go. Same thing. Okay, all that's in. Let me let you take a look around with the finished product. All right, first, like I said, at the intake, that's the one uh, plastic rivet that was different. All the rest of them had the big heads like these. All right, so back to the way that it was. Come in here, again, that's that damage because they just go right in here, grab that horn wire and just pull, and it rips it off the horn. Well, now that's completely gone. Can't see any horn in there anywhere. And if you look around, honestly, you can't see any harness anywhere in there. So the only thing you can see is if you're looking through here and with the hood closed, it'll be dark. But if you're looking through here, it's that one sensor. And if they pull on that, it's not going to stop the horn from, from popping. But there's no horn anywhere in here. You can't see any harnesses anywhere. So nothing they can pull on to stop that horn from going, which again is now conveniently mounted way up here. Won't be quite as loud with the hood closed, but you know, it is what it is. In fact, let's test that out. I'm going to do the hunk standing right here with the hood open. Well, let's close it and see. I imagine you won't be able to tell the difference on camera, but we'll try it anyway. So, horn or hood closed. Yeah, it actually is way more muffled. Way, way, way more muffled. Quite a bit quieter, unfortunately, but they can't uh, stop it from making the noise. So, I'm curious, just pushing on the horn button. Still pretty loud. Still pretty loud, and if I do the, uh, here we go. I mean, it's definitely, definitely muffled, for sure. All right, well there you go, relocating the horn on a Super Duty. Uh, that seemed like a really easy thing. It was uh, because I put in the, because I put in the. Uh, 
sealed additional connector uh, you know that could add a little bit of cost to it those are probably five or six bucks on Amazon and then it was you know four foot of four foot of speaker wire is what I use 14 gauge speaker wire uh, which will be just fine oh, hell a horns a speaker I'm not I'm not worried about that uh, kind of like a speaker anyway uh, so I'm not terribly worried about uh, the wire that I used. I did use the heat shrink that has the solder built into it. That's how I made each of those connections. So that was, uh, you know, two, four, six of those because I put that pigtail in. Uh, but pretty low budget. I found the nut that fit that thing, you know, in my box of miscellaneous things. So I didn't even have to uh, pay for that. Uh, and honestly, I had the speaker wire and that other stuff uh, separate. So for me, this was really incredibly cost effective. Didn't have to purchase anything to make this happen uh so so nice and easy uh you know throw a comment down there if you have any questions happy to answer uh any questions associated with it i was gonna have uh this window replaced uh in this episode as well uh but unfortunately went all the way to the glass shop got the window got all the way home it's for the passenger side not the driver's side i have a feeling it was labeled wrong not their fault i should have checked it before i left um but i'll have to do that in a different video Anyways, thanks for watching. That's what I was working on this weekend. We'll see you next time.